Good morning, and welcome to the Lord's house, a special welcome to our guests and visitors that are here with us. It's great to have you here. On Thursday, it was June 25th, and I told those members that were here that day, it was only six months till Christmas, so now it's past the 25th, so now it is less time to Christmas, so enjoy days like today, and it's certainly a blessing to be here with you in God's house. Friends, we're continuing our series on the lies we believe, and I want you to think for a moment about some difficult times you've had in your life, and maybe if you're like me, you ask, why, God, I'm I'm a Christian. Why is this happening to me? Hopefully, through our word and discussion today, and through the readings, as well as our responsive readings, you'll get an answer to that question. We will be following the order of service as it's printed for you, excuse me, as it's shown for you on your screen. If you brought your worship folder, you may use that as well. We meet with God in the name of the one who said, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Our triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with our opening hymn. focus on the hardships, but we also focus on the comfort we receive. Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial, because when they have stood the test, they will receive the crown of life. I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation. The Lord said to me, My grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in weakness. Consider it pure joy whenever you face trials of many kinds. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Our verse.
confess our sins to God. We know that as Scripture says, we must go through many hardships to enter the kingdom of heaven. But a part of us does not want to hear that. Part of us even rages at that idea. These frustrations and complaints ultimately end up at one place, before the throne of our Lord. So let us join together in confessing our sins. Heavenly Father, too often I think I deserve an easy life. Too often I think you are being unfair with me. Too often I think my way is better than yours. For this arrogance, for this selfishness, for this foolishness, I ask you to forgive me. Wash my sins away and reassure me of your love. Amen. God's forgiveness. Dear members of the family of faith, we know we do not deserve anything good on our own. We know we truly deserve the exact opposite of good. But we also know the work of our Savior. Instead of choosing the easy life, he chose the road of selflessness, service, and sacrifice. Because he did, rejoice in the truth of these words, all of your sins are forgiven. This is a gift of from your triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Thank you, gracious Lord. Alleluia. Amen. Our song of praise. pray. God of power and might, you are the giver of all that is good. Help us love you with all our heart. Strengthen us in true faith. Provide us with all we need and keep us safe in your care. We ask this through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Our first lesson is from James chapter 1, verses 2 to 4, these words we just heard before. Consider it pure, my, pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. This is the word of the Lord. The second lesson is from John 17, 1 to 5. After Jesus said this, he looked toward heaven and prayed, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, 
that your Son may glorify you. For you granted him authority over all people, that he might give eternal life to all those you have given him. Now this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I have brought you glory on earth by finishing the work you gave me to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory I had with you before the world began. This is the word of the Lord. We continue with our verse of the day. Alleluia, alleluia. Happy are they who hear the word, hold it fast in an honest and good heart. Hallelujah. Out of respect for the word and works of our Savior, I ask you to please stand for our gospel. Our gospel is recorded for our learning in Matthew chapter 11. We begin reading at verse 25. At that time, Jesus said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for this is what you were pleased to do. All things have been committed to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Here ends our gospel reading. may be seated. We continue with the singing of hymn number 477, What is the World to Me? Thank you. 
friends in Christ, I, I, I need your help. I am trying to look for the passage that says, because you are a Christian, because you're here in church, because maybe you have been a Christian all your life, or even if you are a newfound Christian to the faith, that your life is going to be easy, that you are going to have no problems. Have you found that passage? I haven't. <laughs> and don't say it's in First Hezekiah, right? The passage doesn't exist. But we live in a world and we live in a society where we say life has to be easy, right? And, and you think about how your beliefs are shaped by your emotions and, and your behavior, actually, right? And we have that culture that everything needs to be easy, right? We live in a culture of convenience where we have the now mentality, right? Maybe this has happened to you. It happens to me quite frequently. I'm at the corner of Highway 33 and Wildwood in the left lane, and I may happen to glance down looking at my phone, right? And if I don't notice the light changing green, what do you think happens? There's a horn because someone's like, you got to get going now, right? But then when it's my turn to be turning, I'm taking my sweet old time, like I'm driving Miss Daisy, taking the turn slow and going, oh, look at the flavor of the day because it's all about me, right? And that trickles into every bit of our life where we want life to be easy, we want life to be about us. So that then means that we don't want difficulties in our life. In the book, The Road Less Traveled, <laughs> the first line says this, life is difficult. Now, you can either run from that like Jonah, <laughs> or you can embrace it. That it is difficult. Yes, it's difficult to have that conversation maybe with your spouse. It's difficult to have that, that conversation with your teen. It's difficult to have that conversation with your coworker. We have come into the, it's got to be easy. If I don't like how things are going, I'll figure out my own solution. But friends, today, as we talk about this lie that everything must be easy. We have to understand something. When we have pain, it sends a message. Think about that for a moment. From little on, you've been told, don't touch the stove. If you get close to the stove, right, it'll be hot. Right? Imagine if we didn't have that type of sensory where you were all about, okay, if I'm doing something that causes me pain, it could cause me even more pain. There is a book that is called The Gift of Pain by Dr. Paul Brand. And basically in this book, he spends over a year in a leper colony with people who have leprosy, people who have no feeling of pain whatsoever. Do you imagine that? The stories that he tells about people standing next to fire and their flame, their, their skin is literally burning and they don't even know it. So as we understand this idea of pain, it's something that none of us wants, but it's something that we really can't do without. So what does that mean for you and me? Well, let's take a look back and see pain sends a message about God. Why is there pain in my life? And as we look at some of the passages, first of all, take a look at this one from John. Jesus says, I have told you these things that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble. Now, if it ended there, I'd be like, whoa, that's a buzzkill, that's a bummer. But it says, take heart. I have overcome the world. So in, in, in the moments of pain, don't think short, short term, think bigger picture. And think of the peace that God has for you. 
Moving on, and this is my favorite, and I know it's in, and it's in a smaller font, but again, if you have a copy of your bulletin, it was the, the one of the readings. If you take a look at it, it says here, Jesus, in his high priestly prayer, he prays for you. How many times have you made these statements I have in the midst of pain, in the midst of struggle? No one knows what I'm going through. No one understands. Jesus does. Jesus is aware of you. And what's cool is before you and I ever walk the face of the earth, he prays for you. He prays for you. Good days and in the midst of pain. And this is my favorite part here about the pain sometimes that uh, God sends into our life where nothing means something. Romans 8, we had that earlier, right? Where nothing in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God, neither height nor depth, neither angels nor demons, right? And I'm a loophole person. If you read Romans 8, it says here, nor nothing or anything else in all creation. Well, what about nothing? What about nothing? Nothing will separate you from God's love. Oh, that's a whole lot of nothing that means something, right? Right? And you might go, well, how can you back that up? (laughs) I want you to think about the pain that Jesus experienced. Because his pain is for God's glory and our good. On the cross, when he had that, 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 that moment of, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Total separation from God for you and for me. Forgiveness for you and me. Death for you and me. Ultimate pain so that you and I will not have to suffer eternally. So what does that mean? We persevere. We've heard that passage before too that Jim read earlier. It said, consider pure joy, my brothers, when you face trials of many kinds because you know the testing of your faith develops perseverance. Perseverance. Perseverance must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking in anything. What does perseverance mean? That idea of keep going despite the struggle. If I were to use the Disney analogy, it's like Dory, just keep swimming, right? Think about it like this, and and I may have used this illustration before. I'll go something sports and something that's uh, work-related. Think about the first week of, of a practice and how the coach has you do these laps or runs or sprints, and you're like, oh, my gosh, I'm going to die. But then midway through the season, you do that same amount of, of conditioning, and it's like, this is great. Or when it comes time to the game and you're pushed to your limits, you're like, I have been pushed earlier. I can make it through this. Or as my wife and I are recently finding out by doing landscaping, we're discovering muscles we never knew we had before because they are sore. But as the summer goes on, we, God willing, will be stronger. That's what God is doing with with the struggles that we face. And that's what we need to understand. We need to change the tape. Friends, if you were a child of the 80s like me, that is a cassette tape. That was the ultimate back in the day. To use the modern, it's like the iTunes playlist, but this was cooler. Because you would take a tape and you would put all of these songs together on it and make the perfect mixtape. And you would have the, 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 the perfect name for it, you know, like Clark's Party Checks Mix, you know, and it was just like, oh, I'm going to send this out to somebody. And then if you didn't like a song, what's cool is on the top of the tape, they had these little tabs. And if those tabs weren't broken out, you could go back and erase one of the songs. That you know, oh, that one's kind of a clunker. And I'm going to put a new one on there. Friends, spiritually speaking, your tape, those tabs aren't busted out. And for the past few weeks, we have been hearing the lies, and maybe you have them on repeat, and you're playing it over and over again. We need to record over that. We need to record over that with the truth that God is going to use the challenges to do the greatest work in your life. 
And then as you go on to the next track, you need to expose the lie and ask yourself, what message is my pain sending me? Like when you touch a hot stove, ooh, I better not do that again. What is it that is happening in my life, and what message is God sending me? Is it to be closer to him? Is it to help someone else? And what is God's ultimate plan through this? Because understand, and keep playing this over and over and over again, that man's extremity is God's opportunity. Think about it. When you come to the end of your rope, that's when God's going to do some of his greatest work. So friends, as we go forward in the storms of life, we, we, we have someone who's with us. We have someone who, yes, even though life is not easy, we have someone who is invincible that walks with us and carries us through those storms of life. Life can bring us storms. Those moments where we wander, wonder, doubt. The journey doesn't stop, but the progress does. It can be lonely, painful. Sometimes we try to stare it down, as if we could somehow will it to go away. Or we think we can go toe-to-toe and come out the other side, unscathed. We often forget just how small we are. The truth is, storms are inevitable. But when they appear, we have a protector. A savior who knows a thing or two about calming storms. A God who is a stronghold in times of trouble. In our weakness, He is strong. In our fear, He is courage. In our desperation, He is peace. Yes, storms are inevitable. But our God is invincible. As we will speak responsively, the second article of the Apostles' Creed and Martin Luther's explanation of that. Together, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. What does this mean? I believe that Jesus Christ, true God, begotten of the Father from all eternity, and also true man, born of the Virgin Mary, is my Lord. He has redeemed me, a lost and condemned creature, purchased and won me from all sins, from death and from the power of the devil, not with gold or silver, but with his holy, precious blood and with his innocent suffering and death. And serve him in everlasting righteousness, innocence, and blessedness, just as he has risen from death and lives and rules eternally. We bow our heads for prayer. Heavenly Father, again we come before you understanding that you are the God of all and that you make all things work out for the good. Help us, Lord, to see that the good is there even in the midst of our pain. Use it to strengthen us. Use it to rely on you and your word. 
Help us, Lord, as Christians to reach out to a world that has pain, that we may give your light to them as well. As you said, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened. We ask for that rest and want to share that rest as well. Lord God, you are the creator and giver of all good good gifts. We thank you especially for those who are celebrating anniversaries today in our church and this week. And we also come before you with a prayer of thanksgiving for those who are celebrating birthdays. Lord, we pray that this day is special both for the birthdays and anniversaries, surrounded by family and friends as they celebrate the passing of another year of your grace. It's in your name we pray. Amen. You may be seated as we will now sing the words of the Lord's Prayer. close with prayer. Dearest Savior, you are the only one ever who walked perfectly in line with your Father's will his whole life. For that and for the salvation that is ours because of it, we thank you. And even though you were perfect, you faced hardship and struggle. Help us to handle it as you did, relying on your Father and ours and seeking comfort and strength in his word. Be with us no matter what we face. We continue to follow you always. In your name we pray. Friends, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look on you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. For our sending song, our piano player will play through the melody and refrain once to get us in tune with how everything goes, and hopefully that will help us. Okay, thank you.